I had just finished stuffing the last of my stuff into a bag when my mom shouted, Elle, come on, time to go. Throwing my backpack over my shoulder, I slid down the railing of the stairs one last time. I was used to moving, but I really liked this house. My dad was standing at the door of the house. He gave me that look, the look he always gave me when we moved, that apologetic look. I could tell he felt bad, but he didn't have to make my mom and I move just because he needed to be closer to his clients for a few months. He could just travel back and forth. Before I continue, don't forget to like and subscribe to let us know if you want more insane stories like this one. I got into the car and immediately put my earbuds in. Moving always put me in a bad mood. We were going to be in the car for a few hours, so I decided to just take a nap. I was trying to fall asleep when I heard my mom and dad talking. My dad said, I feel bad. L being so lonely is my fault. He then raised his voice and looking into the rear view mirror, asked me, L, are you awake? To which I responded with a sleepy grunt. This is our last move, I promise. I jolted awake and sat up energetically. Really? I asked him. He nodded, and I couldn't help tearing up. I started imagining finally having a solid group of friends. Since we moved so often, I never bothered to make friends. That way I wouldn't get hurt when we eventually left, but now it was different. We stopped at a small hotel by the highway a few hours later. This trip was going to take around four days. My mom and I decided to drive to the nearest town and get something for dinner, while Dad stayed behind and took a shower. While we were shopping in the local supermarket, my phone buzzed. I figured it was my dad, but it was a message on social media. I opened it and discovered it was from a boy. And a cute one, too. He said he always saw me eating alone at my old school and wanted to talk to me, but that I suddenly disappeared so he never had the chance. I asked him a bunch of questions to make sure he was real. I even asked him to send me a picture of our school yearbook. I had never seen him before, but I kept to myself. So maybe I just missed him in the crowd of people I avoided. My mom told me to hurry up with a shopping cart, so I slid my phone into my pocket and hurried over to her. My dad went to bed earlier than my mom and I that night because he was tired from driving. My mom stayed up watching a movie on her laptop, and I stayed up talking to Max, the boy who texted me. We talked about why I moved around so much, about school and teachers we hated. He was very funny, and although our conversations were just friendly, I like to think he meant whatever he said with flirty undertones, because I know I did. I talked to Max whenever I could during the road trip. It felt kind of weird, but I had a crush on him. I felt like I could tell him anything, really, and he made having left our last home even more sad. My first day of school at the new school was really scary. The school was twice as big as my old school, which was already huge. I felt like I could get lost, but then I remembered I could make connections with people now because I was going to finish high school there in two years. Plenty of time to make loads of friends. I asked a girl who looked just about my age for directions and headed to class. I talked to loads of people during and in between class. They were excited that there was a new girl, and I was excited to get to know all of them. I couldn't stop smiling all day because I was finally not alone. During lunch, I sat at a table at the cafeteria and people sat around me, asking me about myself and introducing themselves. The girl I had asked for directions earlier sat next to me and asked me, Do you have a boyfriend? I didn't really know what to say because I wanted them to think I was cool, but I didn't want to lie to them. I eventually did lie. I said that Max was my boyfriend, but he lived back home. I showed them pictures of him and all, and I could tell they were impressed, but I felt kind of guilty lying like that. Later that day, I was unpacking boxes in my room when my phone buzzed. My stomach filled with butterflies when I saw it was Max. He was asking me how my first day of school went. I told him everything, about how I always had a crowd around me and made tons of friends. He wrote, wow, you're already replacing me, with a sad face emoji next to it. I chuckled at how cute he was, and then realized I should probably tell him what I said about him. I bit my nails in nervousness when I saw that he left my message on scene after I told him that I had said he was my boyfriend. I tried to take my mind off of him the rest of the day, because hours later, he still hadn't replied. I worked on some schoolwork, baked a pie, unpacked my entire wardrobe, and organized my messy bookshelf trying to work off the nerves. But I still had an uneasy feeling in the pit of my stomach. What if he thought I was a weirdo and never wanted to talk to me again? Around a week passed and Max still had not texted me. I sent him a couple messages because I was worried I had ruined our friendship. At school, I barely thought about him because I was always distracted. But the second I got home and had free time, he was suddenly all I could think about. I was sitting in the cafeteria with some friends, just talking, when a friend sitting across from me looked behind me and smiled. I was about to turn around when someone's hand covered my eyes. 
Guess who? said a boy's voice. I took his hands off my eyes and when I turned around, it was Max. I couldn't believe it. I immediately jumped and wrapped my arms around his neck. I realized I was tearing up a bit, so I hid my face on his shoulder. When I let go, I slapped his shoulder playfully and began scolding him for not texting me back. He said he got permission from the principal to visit the school for a day, so we spent the day at school together. I couldn't help just staring at him whenever he talked. I had never even heard his voice before, and any feelings I had for him grew tenfold. After school, we decided to walk home. I was nervous to spend time with him alone, but he held my hand to calm me down. I asked him, why didn't you tell me you were coming? To which he replied, I wanted to surprise you. He went quiet a second, and then continued, I wanted to ask you to be my girlfriend in person, since it's more romantic and all. My heart simply melted. I wrapped my arms around his neck again and hugged him. We got home 10 minutes later. I was super excited to introduce Max to my parents. Mom, Dad, I said, this is Max, my boyfriend. My dad and Max shook hands first. Then he shook hands more softly with my mom. If it's not a problem for you, Mr. and Mrs. Wilkerson, I'd like to take your daughter out on a date today, Max said. I heard my mom stifle back a squeal of excitement, but dad gave him a disapproving look. Mom elbowed him, after which dad said, Yes, no problem, young man. Mom smiled brightly and pulled me upstairs. She must have made me try on a dozen outfits and five hairstyles. She finally made me slip on a dress and curled my hair slightly. She put mascara and lip gloss on me. I just want your first date to be perfect, she said. I managed to escape my mom's clutches and headed back downstairs, but I wanted to hear the awkward conversation between my dad and my boyfriend. As I tiptoed closer, I heard it much less awkward than I expected. So has your weight gone up, boy? I heard my dad say, which Max denied. What rate? What was my dad paying Max for? I walked in and they both turned to look at me, Max looking guilty. What rate? I asked Max specifically, but my dad jumped in saying, He's going to mow the lawn for us while he's here, and I asked him to pluck the dandelions too. Max simply nodded, but I noticed he wouldn't look me in the eyes. My dad could fool anyone with how good he was at lying. Everyone except me. I had a feeling he and Max were hiding something from me, but I let it go for the time being. Max took me to a cute little ice cream parlor where we sat, talking for hours. He was funny and charming, so of course my stomach was all butterflies when he talked. I felt comfortable around him. I didn't feel self-conscious if I snorted between laughs or if I had some ice cream on my chin. <laughs> he would just laugh and snort back or wipe the ice cream off my chin. We finished our ice cream pretty quickly, so we stood up and went for seconds. I got lemon, and to my surprise, he got peanut butter. I watched him order his ice cream, and when we sat down, he started eating it. How's your ice cream? I asked him. It's great, he replied with a bright smile. I should call an ambulance or something, though, shouldn't I? Before you pass out? I asked him. He looked at me like I had just told a joke he didn't understand. You know, since you're allergic to peanuts, I explained. His <gasps> eyes grew wide. You told me you're very allergic to peanuts, so how come you're eating peanut butter ice cream? I asked him. I put my cup of ice cream down and crossed my arms. Max seemed to deflate. He looked down in shame, before spilling all his secrets to me. He showed me the conversations on his phone, the transactions and the voicemails. I was shocked and hurt. I closed my eyes to keep tears from streaming down my face, but it was in vain. I shot Max an icy glare. He looked desperate and worried. But I want to get to know you, he said, reaching for my hand, but I moved it away and stormed off. I slammed the door open when I got home and went straight to my dad's office. How could you? I shouted at him. You're sick. I can't believe you did that to me. I was offended and I felt invaded. While I thought I was texting a cute boy my age, I was actually texting my own father? His face fell when he registered what I was shouting. L, he began, but I cut him off, saying, No, you don't get to make excuses. You invaded my privacy. You tricked me and Max. You hired an actor to pose as my boyfriend? What made you think that was okay? It's messed up. My mom then walked into the room because she heard the noise. I told her what he had done, and it was reassuring to see that she was just as shocked and disgusted as I was. Dad frantically tried to explain to my mom and I why he would do such a thing, but nothing he said could make it better. I mean, he paid a boy to use his picture, and then pose as my boyfriend? Am I crazy to think that's messed up? I avoided him around the house for months, until the day he left. He kept his promise. We wouldn't move again, but he did. As he drove away from our house, 
I stood with my mom at the front door of our house. My mom wiped a tear from her cheek and asked me, Will you ever forgive your father, darling? To which I replied, Of course. I know he didn't mean to hurt me. My mom sniffled and walked into the house. I was about to do the same. When I heard a familiar voice behind me say, Hell, I turned around and saw Max standing there with a bouquet of beautiful flowers. We stood there for a second, just looking at each other. I hadn't seen him in months. I had almost forgotten what he looked like, because he was only really in my life for half a day. Hell, I'm sorry, he said. To which I replied that it wasn't his fault. I meant what I said at that ice cream place. I do want to get to know you. Everything I learned about you is amazing. Please, just give me a chance. He gave me the bouquet of flowers. It was as big as my entire upper body. I looked at him and couldn't help smiling. I asked him, want to go for some peanut butter ice cream? And we walked hand in hand, taking turns carrying the enormous bouquet that I didn't want out of my sight just yet. Hi, my name is Elena, and you won't believe it, but I was texting the wrong person for five whole years. Sounds absolutely insane, doesn't it? How did I let it last so long? Well, the answer is simple. I was young, foolish, and in love. Let me tell you a bit more about me so you can really understand what happened during all those years. It all began when I was a junior at high school. Being 16, I went through the usual problems teenagers have to face every single day. I didn't feel pretty enough. I didn't feel thin enough. I didn't feel, well, hell, I didn't feel like I was good enough in any way. But before we move on, like this video, hit that subscribe button, and activate the notification bell. This will let you live 20 amazing years longer. Trust me, it works. My self-esteem was really, really low. The fact that I wasn't popular at all didn't help me feel any better about myself, mind you. I did have a few close friends, and they were really nice to me, but it didn't make me feel any better. After all, they all had boyfriends and went on dates constantly. I'd stay home with my mom, dad, and little brother and sulk. Oh, don't worry, honey, my mom would say. You are the prettiest girl in the world, and soon a great guy will notice. If I was the prettiest girl in the world, mom, it wouldn't take long for a guy to notice me, I replied bitterly. Your beauty is on the inside, love, my dad would then say, and that was when I began crying. <laughs> you are saying I'm ugly on the outside? I'd scream back. He tried to fix the mess he'd made for himself, but it was impossible. No matter what dad said after that, I would remain super blue. I can't blame my mom and dad for trying. They were so sweet to me and very patient. Plus, every dad thinks his little girl's the prettiest woman in the world, right? But to me, it wasn't enough. I wanted someone to notice me, to really see me. Why did everyone else in my life find love while I had to stay alone and single? Even when I went out shopping with my friends, guys would hit on them and never on me. My best friend told me it was just because I was too insecure and shy. You hide behind your glasses and your hair. How is anyone going to notice you? Just smile at guys, and I promise you'll get a great boyfriend in no time, she would say. After a while, my friends started to get really worried about me. They tried to make me feel better and suggested that maybe I should try a dating app. Then I didn't have to be bold from the start, and I could just chat with a few guys before actually meeting up with them. That seemed like a great idea. I actually got excited about it, so I agreed. We'll help you set it up and make your profile so hot, another one of my friends told me. I thought it really would work and couldn't wait to begin. Finally, I'd have a boyfriend who I could go on nice dates with. I really did believe at least a handful of guys would be interested in my profile. So the very next day, I headed over to school super excited. I wore the prettiest dress I owned and combed my hair back so it was away from my face. My friends took a few pictures of me and then helped me set up an account. I kept on checking the app over and over and over again. All I wanted was to get a message or two, or maybe five. I hoped I'd get a few choices to pick from and go on lots of fun dates. Maybe even get my first kiss. It sounded like a dream come true, but quickly, the dream turned into a terrible nightmare. Why? Because, well, I'm kind of ashamed to say this, but... No one answered. I mean, even the ugliest gals get a match or two, right? Well, when it came to me, no one seemed to be interested. Not even people who didn't even know a thing about me. 
other than my bio and my profile picture that was. So yeah, you can imagine how damn depressed I got. I couldn't believe this was happening to me. My friends kept trying to cheer me up, but I was inconsolable. You are so pretty. Men are just jerks, my best friend told me. But she had a boyfriend and I didn't. And it wasn't even the first guy she dated. So what was wrong with me? Why couldn't I get anyone to love me? I decided it was useless to keep having the app on my phone. After all, it was only bringing me anxiety and making me feel awful about myself. Each time I checked my mobile, I was reminded of how no one wanted to go out with me. I went to sleep that night, determined to erase the app early next morning. Much to my surprise, though, when I woke up to head over to school, I had a notification from the dating app. Imagine my surprise. I smiled so brightly and checked the message. Hello, beautiful. I'm glad you liked my profile. Tell me a bit about yourself. He had been one of the guys I had swiped right to, and he had actually done the same to me and sent me a text. I checked out his photos again and was surprised to see that he was the cutest guy I had seen in the app. His name was Gabriel. He was 16, just like me. Oh, and he was handsome as hell. He had short blonde hair and was super tall, which was exactly the type of guy I liked. I felt like dancing and singing. And I'm a bit embarrassed to admit that I kind of did. I called my best friend and told her all about it. Even sent her a few screenshots so she could get a look at the guy who had contacted me. She replied via text so excitedly. OMG, Elena, he's so cute. Congrats. Now go answer him right now. I quickly replied, letting him know a few of my likes and dislikes. And much to my shock, he had the same taste that I did. It was as if we clicked in every single thing. From that day on, we texted literally every single day, all day long. I would wake up with a message from him and go to sleep with the sweetest goodnight text. Good night, beautiful. I miss you already, he would type, or something equally as adorable. It always made me smile. I was quickly falling in love with this guy I had never actually met in person. You see, he lived in a different city, and since he was also a student, it was really hard for one of us to simply travel and get to know each other face to face. My mom and dad would never let me take a bus to meet a guy that I had met over the internet. They would freak out if they even knew I was dating Gabriel. So I kept it a secret, and only my friends knew about it. For the longest time, he just chatted through the dating app, and then in other online messages. We even spoke on the phone from time to time, but it was very rare. He always had an excuse, like he had a sore throat or something like that. At first, of course, I believed him because I wanted to think he was perfect. The ideal boyfriend, you know? I didn't much care that it was a long-distance relationship or that I hadn't even enjoyed my first kiss with him by the time I graduated high school. I was willing to go the distance for Gabriel. By the time I moved away to college, it became even harder to meet up with him since we were in a whole other state. I still wanted to see him in person. I was 18 years old, and that meant that my parents could no longer prohibit me from meeting a stranger. To me, Gabriel wasn't a stranger. He was the love of my life. Eventually, after insisting and insisting, I got him to agree to set a date to meet up with me. We'd travel halfway to where we each lived. I took two trains and a long-distance bus. I had to travel for three whole hours. I didn't care about any of that, though. All I wanted was to finally see him and have my perfect first kiss with the love of my life. But when I got to the restaurant we were supposed to meet at, he was nowhere to be seen. I was so excited, though, thinking he was simply running late. I had dressed up with a beautiful red blouse and a pair of tight-fitting jeans. Also, I was wearing high heels, and that was so rare in me. I also wore makeup and lots of perfume. I looked really cute. Some guys in the restaurant even stared my way, and one tried to flirt with me. It seemed I had gone a long way from those days I couldn't even get a guy to notice me. But I didn't care at all. All I wanted was to be with my lovely Gabriel. The problem was, he didn't show up. I waited and waited and waited. I sent him text after text, but he didn't even answer. A whole hour went by, and he finally replied, I'm so sorry, love. I had a family problem. Won't be able to meet you. I love you. Believe me. I was heartbroken completely devastated. I wanted to cry, but didn't want to sob in public like a little girl. I rushed back home, but that meant taking another bus 
and another two trains. It was the longest trip of my entire life. That day, I refused to answer his texts or phone calls. I was so angry, so frustrated, and in so much pain. He apologized over and over, and eventually, I tried to pretend that everything was okay, but I couldn't do it. I grew so suspicious of him and began doing some research. I even demanded we had a video call so I could finally see him. He put up excuses, and they were all so stupid. I can't, sorry, my phone's camera is broken, he said, and I called BS on that immediately. There was something really fishy about this whole situation. After waiting years and years for an answer, I was determined to get one. Eventually, Gabriel got tired of arguing with me all the time and agreed to have that video call at long last. That was when I discovered the whole truth. Gabriel wasn't my age. He was a chubby, ugly, middle-aged man. But I'm still the man you fell in love with, he told me, begging for me to forgive him. I told him I never wanted to speak with him again and blocked him from all my social media accounts and never again answered his calls. He sent me email after email trying to explain why he did what he did, telling me he loved me, that he wanted to marry me, but his name wasn't even Gabriel. It was Tom. I was done with him and I'll never, ever change my mind. How could he have lied for five whole years? I couldn't believe anyone could be so cruel and pretend to be another person for so long. I think he was some sort of freak or psycho to have been able to lie for so very long. The only good thing that came out of this whole mess was that I learned to never, ever trust people online. I'm also far more confident now, and guys actually notice me. I've gotten myself a few amazing dates and had my first kiss too. Thanks for watching. What's the worst lie someone ever told you? And how long did you believe it? Let us know in the comments. Don't forget to subscribe and check out other videos on the channel. Growing up, my parents did always act a little strange. They weren't like your normal parents. Sometimes they were nice and fun. Other times, they would yell at me and ground me for days on end. Other times, they saw things like hallucinations. They'd talk to thin air as if someone was standing there. Sometimes they would be in the living room watching TV. And as I walked in, they would stare at me like they had no idea who I was. Pretty weird, right? But before I go on, please make sure you like and subscribe to this channel. And hit that notification bell if you want more creepy, exciting stories like this. Sometimes they saw things that scared them, like when we were at the zoo. We were watching the monkeys as they moved about in their home, and my parents came running to me, telling me we had to leave now. They said the monkeys had escaped from their cage. We had to get out. But as they dragged me away, I looked back at the monkeys and realized everything was perfectly normal. My parents had just been delusional. And then there was the time at the birthday party. It was my closest friend and he had invited me to his party. We were already around 10 years old, but this was the first time I had ever been to a birthday party. I begged my parents to let me go and they must have been in a good mood because they agreed. I was so shocked and excited. I was ready to have the best day ever. We drove up to the house, knocked on the door and my friend opened it. I handed him his present and we went off to play in his backyard while the parents chatted to each other. I gasped in wonder as we entered the backyard. There were tables piled with cakes and snacks and soft drinks and another table where my friend had all of his presents piled high. There was a jumping castle and a trampoline and my friend told me there was a pinata that we would play with later on. I was so excited. I knew this was going to be so much fun. We started playing hide and seek with the other kids. I'd barely been there an hour when my parents suddenly appeared. They had a wild look on their face and were staring fearfully around. My mom was looking at the trampoline as if it was a monster. My dad was staring at the ground as if it were made of lava. They looked at me and I walked dutifully over to them. Nathan, we have to go, said mom. But why? I just got here, I whined. Don't argue, we're leaving, said dad. I stomped my foot. But why? I demanded. My mom leaned in, whispering in my ear. Can't you see it? The ground is moving. If we don't leave now, it'll swallow us up. I stared at them in confusion. I looked at the ground. It looked pretty normal to me. But I trusted my parents, so I followed them back. We got in the car and drove home. The next day, my friend asked me at school why I had left so suddenly. 
I told him my parents had said the ground was going to eat us. My friend was offended and didn't speak to me for the rest of the school year. Now I realize that my parents' behavior wasn't normal. Far from it. Of course, I hadn't thought that when I was younger. I was used to it, since I had grown up my whole life that way. Sometimes my parents were confused. Sometimes they acted strange. Sometimes they found it hard to talk properly. But I still loved them. They were still kind and caring, just a little different to your average parents. We also moved around a lot. I rarely stayed at the same school for more than a year. I didn't have many friends. I guess I had a pretty lonely life. But then, one day at school, a woman came to class to give a presentation on mental health. As she walked into the classroom, I remember thinking she was very pretty, with her long brown hair and green eyes. And I also remember thinking that she had the same brown hair and green eyes as me. But I didn't bother thinking about it too long because the woman had begun her presentation. She introduced herself as Miss Johnson. But you can call me Sarah. She talked about all different kinds of disorders like depression or anxiety, and then she mentioned schizophrenia. She explained all of its symptoms, like how people might act, the things they might do, and I thought to myself, that sounds like my parents. They hallucinate a lot. They behave differently. They have a lot of mood swings. But, of course, they couldn't be schizophrenic. That's just how they acted. They didn't have a mental illness, right? But then I started to do some research, and I found it sounded exactly like them. This couldn't be a coincidence. All my life, I had thought that was just how they behaved. I never considered they might be mentally ill. I decided I had to go see a professional about this. I found Sarah's phone number and called her. It wasn't long before she picked up. Hello, who is this? She asked. I cleared my throat. Um, <clears throat> it's Nathan, a student from the class you presented to. Oh, hi Nathan, how can I help? Well, it's my parents. I explained to her all about it, about how I suspected my parents might be schizophrenic after I heard her presentation. I thought it was best if I made sure and sought professional help. She said it was the right thing to do, but she would have to meet them first before she made any diagnosis. We organized for her to come tomorrow to meet them and conduct a session. I was really nervous. I was scared my parents might get mad at me for going behind their back. But I knew it was for the best. This was for their own good. It was important that they get help if they needed it. When Sarah arrived, she knocked on the door and my parents looked at each other with confusion. Who could that be? Asked my mom. They went to open the door and as the door swung open and Sarah appeared, my parents seemed to freeze. I saw all the color drain out of their faces. Sarah also looked shocked and stared at my parents as if she knew them. My parents seemed to recognize her as well. Then Sarah started yelling at them and she looked at me and gasped. Understanding dawned on her face. Oh my God, said Sarah, my son. Wait. Hold up, did she just call me her son? I was so confused, what was going on? But then suddenly my parents slammed the door on her and grabbed me and ran to the back of the house. They threw me in the car and without another word, we started driving at insane speeds far away from our home. We drove for hours and hours until eventually we stopped at a motel. I was still so shocked by the sudden turn of events. I didn't even know what to think. But I followed my parents inside. My parents were all nervous and fidgety and seemed to be scared. That's when I told them what I had done, how I had asked Sarah to come, as she was a specialist, and how I had suspected that they were schizophrenic. Nathan, how could you do this to us? My dad screamed at me. But then, just as quickly, his mood switched, and suddenly he was all kind and consoling. You're right, he said sadly. I was too shocked to respond. We haven't been completely honest with you, said mom. You see, my dad took a deep breath. We are schizophrenic. So it's true, I whispered. They nodded. And one other thing, my mom admitted. We, she paused, we escaped from an insane asylum. My mouth fell open in surprise. I did not expect that. I was shocked, but it all made sense. That's why they acted strangely. That's why we moved so often. That's why we never made many friends. Okay, I said, but what about Sarah? Why had she called me her son? Then they got angry again, and I didn't know what to do, so I just bolted from the motel room. I had no clue where I was. We'd left the house so quickly, I hadn't had time to pick up my phone, so I just stumbled out onto the street and tried to find someone to help me. 
I spotted a police car in the distance heading my way, so I ran forward and tried to wave it down. Thankfully, the policeman stopped and asked me what was wrong. I explained to him all about what had happened and he seemed confused, but told me he would take me to the police station where I would be safe. I felt so bad for ratting on my parents, but I knew it was for their own good. When I was at the police station, the policeman told me they had found my parents. They were now in detainment and would soon be returned to the asylum they had escaped from. I was devastated. In just a few hours, my entire life had been taken away from me. Where would I go? Where would I live? How would I survive? As all these scary thoughts raced through my head, the policeman told me I had a surprise visitor. As I stepped into a separate room, I was shocked to see Sarah there. How did you find me? I asked. When your parents drove off, I followed them, she said. I had so many questions, but I didn't know how to start. Sarah spoke first. Look, I think I owe you the truth. Your parents are schizophrenic. And around 10 years ago, they escaped from an insane asylum. I already knew this, but still, the information was startling. I used to work at the same asylum, continued Sarah. I was an assisting nurse, and I used to help the patients eat and sleep. But one day, I had to bring my son to work with me, as the daycare was closed for the day and I was a single mom. She took a shaky breath. I regretted that decision for the rest of my life. On that same day, your parents escaped from the asylum. As they were heading out, they spotted my son and kidnapped him. I had searched for him for years, and I had thought I would never see him again, until right now. I stared at her. So you mean, she nodded. I'm your real mom. I had to take a seat. This was too much to handle in one go. I had just found out my parents were escapees from an insane asylum. And now, they weren't even my real parents. I'd been kidnapped. Sarah obviously saw my shock, and she was quick to console me. She told me she was so happy now that she'd found me, and she wanted to live with me and be her mom again. I was still apprehensive, but I guess it was better than living with two schizophrenic kidnappers. I told her I would like to live with her. Five years later, I'm still living with my real mom. And it's so nice. She's so kind to me, and I think we're really bonding. At first, I thought it would be awkward, but it wasn't at all. Sarah immediately made me feel at home, and I think I'm starting to feel like her son again. I still visit my parents in their asylum sometimes. It's so strange seeing them there, but I know it's what's best for them. Here, they can live peacefully without posing as a danger to others. When I visit, sometimes they act normal, and I start to think they're ready to get back into the outside world. But then other times, they're angry and are always yelling at me. It's very confusing, and I know it's only a symptom of the mental illness, but still, it's hard. It's hard, but I'll always love them.